Hello, my crafty loving friends. Welcome to our Purpose My Way. Are you ready for the, some thrift flips, woodworking projects, and upcycled decor? Well, let's get started. My first project is this tote. It's like a shoe shine tote, I guess. It had some shoe shine material in it when I found it. And I took the stuff out because I did not want it. But I did want this tote because it's very cool. So I'm going to take the top off it and do a little something different. And I'm going to show you what I do. I'm actually going to get two projects out of this one just by removing the top of this box. Okay, so I'm going to close this up a little bit. It kind of it kind of waves out. Hopefully, um, I can get it so it'll come in a little bit. So when I put my my handle on on the inside, it doesn't look so big and kind of stick out. I mean, it'd be okay if I did it like this, but I'm going to try and cut it here and see how it looks. Then I'll have to flip it over and do the other side, hopefully to match. I'll just use the pieces that I used to cut here on the other side, I hope. Um, sometimes it doesn't work very well, but we're going to try it. And then I'll cut my handle down and figure out how long I want it. And then I can put that right onto the top of my box on here, one way or the other. I like using these flat ones for these. I don't know why but I do. So yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. And then I got to sand it down because it's all, oh, it's been outside and weathered and stuff. Not for a while, but it did get weathered out there. It's from the back of a chair. So let me get these sides cut and then um, we'll put the, the handle down and get everything sanded and cleaned up. So this is the top of that little caddy that I pulled off and I've got a few little nail holes here and instead of filling them in I think what I'm going to do is just zip them off here with the table saw so I'll just do a little bit and just cut off here just be just after those little holes Okay, so I have this, I don't know what it is, a puzzle, I guess, and it's got these little balls on it. It's a pyramid, pyramid puzzle, and it looks old. But anyway, uh, it comes with all kinds of these round balls, and when I saw them, I knew that I could use them as feet. So what I'm going to do is use my bandsaw here to cut these down to um, so that I can have four of the balls for my feet for my little tray. So I think I'm going to just cut this one down and do do like this, do like I did with this one. It's got a little lip on it. I've got to get rid of it. I've got to sand it off. But luckily I have a new sander over there. See? Hi, sander. <laughs> so I should be able to hold on to that and just run it real quick over it. It'll take right care of that little lip that's on there. So I am going to use some Gorilla wood glue to attach the handle to the box. I am also going to add some nails once it sits for a little while and dries. And then I'll nail those two ends in to make sure that they're nice and sturdy. I'm then going to go ahead and add some feet to the bottom of my little tray. I think this is going to make this look so cute and just a little bit of a rise on it makes it, uh, it just gives it another dimension and a more height to 
a vignette or a tray that you're trying to display something with. Once the box had sat for a while and the glue had dried, I am just putting a nail on each end to give it a little more stability. Now I'm gonna take some Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. This is Lantern, which is a black color, and I'm gonna mix this together. I've never used milk paint before, so I bought these samples from Jamie Ray Vintage, and I wanted to try them out. So I thought I would try them on this little caddy and the tray. So you, are, you use equal parts of each of the powder, the paint powder, and the water. So I just used some little plastic cups that I had, those are probably two tablespoons, uh, and mixed it really, really well. I did not show you all of the mixing, but I was there for several minutes just mixing it together to make sure it was mixed well. So now I'm just gonna start in the inside of my box and give it a nice coat of paint. And all it took was one coat. This really covered very well. I was hoping I'd have a little bit more chipping on the box, but because milk paint tends to do that, but I did not have uh, much chipping. Uh, actually, I didn't have any chipping at all. I did have a little bit of uh, some uh, crackling here and there, but it, it wasn't uh, anything to, it wasn't any big deal as far as that goes. So all the paint stuck to both of my pieces really well. Once everything was dry, I did go back and distress both of the pieces. And now I'm taking some Waverly Antique Wax and giving it a coat of the wax all over, and then I'm gonna wipe it back. This gives the black a nice, deep, rich color, and it enhances where it has been distressed. This cute little pitcher I've had for quite a while, I did it up, I put this uh, iron orchid design mold on the front of it of the cow quite a while ago and I put it in my booth. It has not sold so it's one of the pieces that I brought home from last week to redo. So I'm taking the latte paint from Dixie Bell and I'm going to give it a more warm uh, basic look with this latte paint and then I will do some distressing afterwards. So it just takes one coat that's all I need to put on there and now I'm going to take some Waverly clear wax and give it a nice coat. I'm going to be using some antique wax later on and I want to make sure that I can pull back what I want of that wax and not get too much on my pitcher. I love using antique wax on my pieces especially ones that have a lot of detail because the wax sits down in the cracks and crevices and when you wipe it back it leaves such a really cool look and I thought that using that on this cow and on the edges of this pitcher it would be perfect. So I'm just going around the cow and making sure that it gets down in all those cracks and crevices and around the outside. I want a little bit of a halo around him, not too, too much, and uh, just, uh, just wiping that back until I'm happy with how it looks. Now I'm just gonna go along the edges as well and along the handle and up the little seam in the back. And I also do the spout as well to uh, just enhance those pieces.
I have been struggling recently with my lighting for my projects and making sure that I'm getting enough light or the correct light on my project so that you are able to see what I'm doing and I'm able to see what I'm doing. Uh, and so when I was contacted by Anna from La Power LED Lights, I said immediately, yes, I'll definitely try it. So I thought it would show you how easy it is to put together it's so simple right out of the box. The instructions are very easy. There's only one little or two little pages there to go by. And it one of them explains how to put it together. And the other one explains the, uh, the little buttons on the bottom where you can turn it on and off and adjust your lighting. So this is very simple. Just snap together and run the little cord down through the piping and then just twist it so that it is connected uh, all the way so it stands up nice and strong. I love the gooseneck lighting on this light. It makes it easy to adjust it how you want it. You can turn it so that it is facing in any direction or downward or upward, any way that you want. Uh, the plug-in is very easy to find. It's right in the back. It's a nice, fairly long cord. And I really love the digital display on the front. There's a little on off switch and look how bright that is right out of the box. Now it does have buttons on either side there that you can push to make it lighter and the light not so strong. And you can also make it a little bit stronger and brighter. You also can change the different light settings on there as far as how bright you want it, a white light or a yellow light, it works very well. It has a little display there that shows you where you're at as far as how bright you are on the light. So you can go all the way up or all the way down. It all depends on what you want. This is a very nice light. I think this would be great for people that like to craft or sew or knit. It's a great light for that. I will have a link down in the description if you are interested in purchasing one. I love doing over these memo boards because you can make them look so cool in primitive decor. This was $4 at Goodwill and it had some nice easy access to the back to take that off. So I took the cork board off the back and gave it a good cleaning as it was pretty dirty. And then I took the milk paint from Sweet Pickens. This is Lantern. I had this mixed up and I still had quite a bit left. So I'm going to be using that on this project as well. So I gave this two coats because it was a lighter color. It didn't cover as well. So I'm just giving two coats with this milk paint. Once that's all done, I take the antique wax and go over it uh, all over to give it a nice rich look and seal it in. I put it on and then wipe it back. I grabbed a piece of my wallpaper border out of my stash and I thought this would look really pretty in the frame at the top of the memo board. So I'm just figuring out how I want this on there and I want to make sure that I have the little rise and shine sign that's there and I also want the sunflowers. I think it goes really well with this time of year and also it's just very pretty and I love sunflowers. So I set it down in the frame and pushed it in there and gave it a good rub to kind of give me a reference on where to cut so that I can make it the right size. And then I did the same on the sides as I did the top and just trimmed that out so that it would fit just perfectly so I wouldn't have to do much to it once I put it down. 
So this is self-adhesive, uh, so all I had to do was wet it. It's pre-pasted, so I wet it, and I just let it sit for a minute, and then I added it to my little frame at the top. I also took a piece from the bottom of that wallpaper border and added that to the little sign, and I'm going to add just a bow to the top of that. I took a little bit of the latte paint that was on a brush that I had and I just wipe, wiped those along the edges or wiped it along the edges to give it a little bit of a distressed look. It just adds a little bit of interest and pulls all the colors together. I'm taking a little bit of homespun material. I cut it down to uh, almost exactly fit my little piece of cork board. That I have I wanted to cover that up and it can still be used as corkboard even though it's covered so I added that with some hot glue and then I just flipped it over and cut the edges so that they would fit uh, nice and tight I didn't want it to hinder it being able to go back into the frame put it back in added my little bow with a little bow twine as well and now I have a nice quick upcycle of primitive decor thrifted this really cool mailbox from Goodwill the other day for four dollars and it's very cool I really like it a lot I don't think I'm going to paint the metal part of it although I could it would be really easy to do that but it's not really that bad the part that I don't like is the frame that's on the back that it's sitting on it needs that because it does not have a back on it so that's fine with me, but I think I just am going to take it with some of my latte paint and do one coat on the back of that to just make it look a little bit better. It looks like it wasn't finished, and I think this is going to make it look really nice and warm for some home decor. I'm going to take a little bit of black paint on a dry brush and just brush those along the edges to make it look a little bit distressed and give it some more interest. And then I'm going to put it back together and this piece is done. my thrift flips woodworking and upcycled projects today let me know down in the comments if you have a favorite and which one it is don't forget to like share and subscribe if you haven't already and check out the description for the link to the light and possibly a discount code thank you for watching have a great day